So what I'm looking for uh, right now, we've pulled into this little bit calmer pocket. There's some wind blowing today, but the sun has been hitting these, these particular docks here um, for the majority of the day. So I talked about fishing this thing pretty slow in the winter, kind of dragging it on the bottom. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to throw it towards the piece of structure, which in this case is a dock. Um, obviously, the farther you get under the dock, probably the better chance you have of catching a fish, especially on the lake we're on here. It's got uh, very clear water. Um, it's got spotted bass and largemouth. So a jig is always a good bait for me to get a bigger bite, typically, in the winter. Um, again, I want to work it pretty slow. I want to skip it under the docks, um, get it around those floats if you can. And if you're starting to see some like brim or something like that in the backs of the pockets, you know, swimming it, uh, maybe going to a power chunk instead of this boss grub. But for the boss grub, you know, like I said, it's a mix of spotted bass and largemouth in the lake. So I like the boss grub just because it, it'll target any fish, you know, even a spotted bass. It's a little smaller profile of a jig than than your big, big skirted, big chunk. Um, so those spotted bass can uh, get this jig as well. And it comes, like I said, it comes with a four out Fusion 19 hook, which is an awesome hook. I, I use all the uh, Fusion hooks. Uh, you know, I've fallen in love with the treble hooks and now it's awesome to have it in a jig. Now when I go in between these docks, you know, so I'm not wasting time, I'll I'll uh, actually throw it to the rocks and swim it back to the boat just so I'm covering water. You can, you can cover a lot of water with a jig. You don't have to just drag it. But now when I get to these deeper docks, you know, I want to cover about the full area of the dock. Like I'll fish the front, the back. Um, if they've got any poles, I'll fish the poles, stuff like that. So when I get to the docks, obviously I'll drag the jig a little bit slower. But in between them, uh, if you got some rocky banks and stuff like that, you know, you can you can swim your jig down the bank so you're not wasting time just in between just so you're not waiting to make the next cast on a dock. Now unless you get on a pattern where you know the majority of your bites are going to come on a dock or a certain dock, like these two back here to me seem really really good for a jig being that the sun has been facing this direction all day. These were the ones that they warmed up first and they've got the most sunlight throughout the day. But with the jig, I've got 15 pound line, which is a little lighter than what I would throw if I had a little bit dirtier water. If I had some dirtier water, I would throw it on 17 or 20, but also this being a finesse jig, that 15 pound line makes it a lot more manageable to cast. I've got a seven, seven foot, one inch rod and it's got, a, it's got a good tip on it. It allows that jig to load up so I can skip it under the docks. Um, too stiff of a rod, you run into uh, your bait not loading up to where you can skip it. There's one. Oh, it's a little guy, but that was a prime example. Up under the floating part of the dock. Oh, we came off right at the boat. Not a very big one, but I skipped it up in the shade there and hopped it once and he bit it. So they may want it. let your jig fall to the bottom and just give it one little hop. A lot of times, especially with those spotted bass, that'll cause a reaction out of them if they're sitting there staring at it. And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.